Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Film Room Podcast. This is episode six. I'm your host, Joe Barice. I'm here with my trusty co-host, Joby Fawcett. Joby, how are we doing? Well, Joe, we're having a pretty good week so far. It's certainly been interesting with the weather impacting the fall sports season for the first time all year. So we're kind of getting backed up a little bit on some of the fall sports scheduling here, but we're we're trudging along here, Joe. Joey, we're we're doing a little a, a little little different this week. You know, uh, our our schedule's a little different for the podcast. I, with my sister for her birthday, went to a corn concert. Corn Gojira, who played at the Olympics, and Spirit Box. We went to a concert, so we're we're a little we're a little later. Happy birthday to my sister, by the way. That was Monday. And Joe, the proper the proper courtesy that you should extend to your sister is to actually allow our listeners to know her name. That's true. It's <laughs> a good point. My sister Cecilia. Very um, good. Yep. I won't say an age, but I will say that it. You know, happy birthday to my sister Cecilia, as you said. And so it's a. Uh, it's 10:15 Eastern Standard Time, specific, uh, specific, Pacific. That's it. So, Joby, tell us about your your setup at night here. We're going through the roundups. What, right. what is your setup at home? Well, Joe, we're just catching a second wind. Right. Right. <laughs> in, exactly. in the evening, I always have to chuckle when people are certainly in the old days when. We would be covering an event, something, you know, for an example, would be a, a district basketball game or a, a track and field meet district event that went deep into the night or into the 930 hour. And people would be, you know, asking me if they, you know, wanted to stop, step out for, for dinner or whatever. And I would be like, I'm just going into work. Exactly. You know, we're just getting started. <laughs> and, and, and listen. Things have not changed. We're still plugging away. I just did an interview with an athlete about a half hour ago and, and for a story I'm working on for Friday's paper. So, yeah, I mean, this is just when when you texted me to pick up the pieces here and let's get this podcast rolling along. Um, I'm already awake, Joe. We're good. That's right. That's right. Hey, it's a 24 hour, a 24 seven news cycle. Right. And we're 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 always trucking. Obviously, we we actually just had some, as you know, Joby, some some Valley View softball commits this evening. Well, isn't that exciting though for those kids? I I believe yeah. today is the first day that they can commit for the, those sports. Right. And and what a, what a great honor for those kids. Abby Call is going to Clemson, I believe, Joe. Yep, yep that's right. That's is that right? right? Yep. Oh, that's that's amazing. And Kelly Karwowski is going to We Are Penn State. So I mean, yeah, and really wasn't cool. she our softball player of the year last year, sure Joe? Sure was, sure was. Who knows, Joby. Scotty Walsh? Absolutely, he's all over it. He's all over it. We've got a story up there, right now on the website. So yeah, you know, lots lots of things continuously happening. Also, Lilia Calvert tied the school mark earlier this week, and in fact tonight broke the Abington Heights career goal record with her 89th goal surpassing Megan Callahan's record. So we're constantly moving here, Joby. We're, we're, we've got some great athletes. And Joe, really in Lilia Calvert's accomplishment comes in the, the category of not shocking. Right. <laughs> she's going to, she's going to Rutgers, by the way. So yep. a lot of division one athletes and Joe, I just want to make a, quick point here because we, you know we do like to point these types of things out and not that we're always on the politically correct spectrum here but boy you know we have really in northeast pennsylvania had a heck of a run here with our female athletes going to major division one programs in all sports yeah. across the board and you know you know what a great job by the young athletes here and the coaches and, you know, I think one of the things, Joe, and I, we haven't really kind of, you know, jumped into this too much on a big scale is, you know, girls have just become very committed to athletics. And, you know, you can watch, I know my daughter, when she played softball at Hofstra, 
she really got caught up in following the collegiate game. You know, it's always on ESPN, the College World Series, and the ESPN2, I believe, has a contract where it does a lot of the SEC games. And, you know, of course, the Caitlin Clark phenomenon yep. has really caught on. And, and girls' basketball is thriving here in Northeast Pennsylvania, as we know. And, you know, it's just it's a real neat thing to see the young female athletes in Northeast Pennsylvania you know, reaping the benefits of this hard work and the commitments that they have made to their athletics beginning at a very young age, Joe. And now they're receiving these big Division One scholarships. And that's a great accomplishment to them and a great credit to their families and to, to their commitment to their sport. Absolutely, Joby. And it's, and it's funny you say that because I have my, my setup. I've got the three computer screens. I got my laptop, the two desktop. Viewers, but to my right, I'm watching the WNBA playoffs. So that that tells you how far how far the sport has come. Caitlin Clark, unfortunately, was just eliminated from the postseason by the Connecticut Sun. But hey, Joey, my New York Liberty are still are still in it. So I'm I'm thrilled. I hope they could continue to make a run. But but Joby, let's 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 jump there. Let's let's talk about some more milestone performances and we have a new sport so last week it feels like a little while ago but you wrote about lauren beamer she reached her 500 kill mark and uh, this week you had mia suma of north pocono reach her 500 kill mark in volleyball so some some milestone performances there anna pusilowski from Abington heights cross country won her Lackawanna League meet last last week, helped improve the Lady Comets to nine and zero, getting three wins over some some quality teams, and uh, she also won the uh, foundation meet in Hershey. Play, I, I'm sorry, she placed third at the third. PIAA. Yes, PIAA foundation meet in Hershey, 254 runners. Those are a few. Also, Alicia Davis of Dunmore scored her 50th career goal last week so some some great performances by some some girls over these past few weeks yeah joe so obviously i'm a little bit closer to the accomplishments of lauren beamer and mia suma being that i cover the girls volleyball and and you know uh, we brought this up earlier on an earlier film room podcast with uh, reagan palmer who yeah. reached the milestone of 500 assists and you know These accomplishments for the young ladies in the Lackawanna League for volleyball is just incredible. And this has been a trend, you know, most recently because, you know, we've really had high elevation of play in girls volleyball in the Lackawanna League in the 15 years that I've been covering it. So nothing surprises me anymore with these great accomplishments that you mentioned also that trickled into the other sports. Being that I've covered, you know, girls track, I've covered you know, obviously the girls volleyball and girls tennis. It, it's just been a, a really, really neat thing to watch how these these girl these teams that are made of the female players, the female athletes, just how much they are excelling. Remember, Joe, we have a girls tennis team at Scranton Prep that is the defending PIAA Class Two A champion. Yep, yep. We had a state champion in girls basketball a couple of years ago with Dunmore. We had a girls track and field team championship well realistically we had a girl win a state championship by herself and tatum norris yeah. from susquehanna so just been a great run here for the female athletes they have a lot to be proud of absolutely and it's funny you speak of reagan palmer who's just last last week she had 30, 35 assists in a match and so she's not slowing down either not at all no. <laughs> but another cool thing that happened last week and you know, girls flag football, PIAA officially sanctioned the sport. It's it's the second girls sport to be sanctioned in a two year span. And just to speak to, I'm the wrestling beat writer for the Time Tribune, and adding girls wrestling, it's been really amazing to watch these girls break into the sport rather quickly 
actually. They, they're they learning extremely quickly and just succeeding on the highest level. I mean, Sage Olver from Honesdale finished third in the state. Sarah Shook from Western Wayne finished fourth in the state. And there were, uh, across District 2, I believe if I remember correctly off the top of my head, there were 15 girls who qualified for individual the individual state championships and it was just just amazing when they first walked onto that Hershey floor at the Giant Center and everyone just gave a standing ovation it's just as we're talking about it's just an amazing time for for female sports female athletes and girls flag football will just open up another opportunity for these absolutely talented girls to thrive. Yeah, Joe, listen, the uh, flag football, of course, it really got a strong push because of the support of the National Football League. Yeah, yeah. You know, both both organizations, franchises in the state of Pennsylvania really threw them their support behind this. They've already had successful girls flag football in the Philadelphia and Pittsburgh areas because of the they both of them were sponsored by the Philadelphia Eagles and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. We've all heard about these kind of, I hate to use the phrase now because it doesn't seem very right to, to use it, but I will, the powder puff games. Yeah. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of the schools in our area used to have these girl flag football games as part of their homecoming traditions or whatever and the, and the, the activities leading into the homecoming game or senior week or whatever. And, you know, look, the sport of football is an extremely popular sport, certainly on a national scale and a collegiate scale. It's always been very popular here locally with the high school levels. So we're going to see now the, one of the things that, that does tend to happen, it's always very exciting when you start adding more sports, we've, we've of course expanded the number of teams in the Lackawanna League for girls volleyball. That's a good thing. We've, you know, now added girls wrestling with a league. Uh, we've had, we've got girls golf as a league by itself. Now uh, we're going to eventually, of course, have girls flag football in the spring, according to PIAA executive director Robert Lombardi. So now what I worry about and again, this is a small concern of mine is that, you know, with more opportunities, you know, you always have to rob Peter to pay Paul, as they say. Mm. So how do, how does adding flag football as a sanctioned sport then affect some of the other spring sports we already have here in the state? But that's certainly uh, something that we'll see later on down the road. But look, you got to be, it's got to be encouraging for these young players who, who would like to play football, flag football. I know there's a couple of organizations here in the area that have already started playing female flag football, so we'll see how it takes off. Right now, Joe, by all accounts, and I'm sure that this will pick up steam as, as we move forward, in the LIAA right now, no school has shown any indication that it's going to, or it's ready to sponsor a, a girls' flag football, but that's going to change. Obviously, with, you know, they're going to do some, some surveys and, and, you know, some interest polls to see if it's worth this school sponsoring. Nobody wants to put a team out there with a few numbers if they don't have enough to, to field an actual team. But as this data starts to come in, and believe me, it's going to be a popular thing. I'm pretty sure yeah. if you're going to see these teams pop up. And, you know, it's again, as you mentioned already, another great opportunity for young athletes to participate in some sort of interscholastic activity, which we're always encouraging here at the high school level. Absolutely. And just another quick, just to touch on girls district two team golf championships were earlier this week. Brianna Moffat and Liz George led Abington Heights to the district two class three, a team title Honesdale golf club Moffat with an 84 and George with an 87 no shock here, North Pocono's Lila Jones was the medalist, I believe with a 79. I did not write that down. Failure on my part, but she was the medalist Class 3A event. And Tunkanic won the District 2 Class 2A title, led again. Haley Brown uh, had a 75. No, no shock there. She's been 
playing lights out, out all season. So those are the performances, at least from, from girls. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure I missed, I'm sure I missed some, but heck, heck of a week from our athletes on the girls side, but also we had some great efforts on the boys side as well. Let's talk a little bit about our Times Tribune athlete of the week, Josh Vinton, Western Wayne football. It's probably about time he got, he got our, our award, our weekly award. Last week in a win over Old Forge, he scored five touchdowns total, running for 270 yards and four touchdowns. He also had a 38 yard interception return for a score. He's got 850 yards and 11 <laughs> touchdowns on the season on 104 carries for, for a team that's just been incredible this season. Jovi, what, I mean, what is there left to say about Josh Vinton? Well, Joe, he's been knocking on the door every week this season. Yes. And he's been, he along with his teammate Sean Owens have really been kind of the, the, the spark that Western Wayne has used to its 5-0 and start to the season. We've touched on it a little bit, too, and I know, Josh, during some of the interviews that I've had in post-game and in preseason when around the camps, and uh, he was the spotlight player for our game face in the preseason. You know, a lot of the credit goes to the linemen at Western Wayne. Yeah. Uh, clearly, Josh is a terrific football player and a great running back, and and Sean is is a wonderful, dynamic athlete at the wide receiver position and in the defensive secondary. But, you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about this, Joe, and it doesn't get emphasized enough just because of the nature of football. But to be a truly successful team, a championship caliber team, you've got to have that depth and that strength along the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. West Wayne certainly has that. And Josh has capitalized on that because, look, he's been great. I mean, 270 yards rushing in, in really what was limited playing time. I believe the starters came out of that game quite early yeah. for Western Wayne against Old Forge. And, you know, he finished with five total touchdowns. I think he's got 13 total touchdowns on the year, two interception returns for touchdowns. And just a quick story about Josh Vinton, Joe. During his sophomore or freshman season, I'm sorry, his freshman season, so he was a backup. He he, along with Sean Owens, were brought up to the to the varsity team as freshmen for Western Wayne. And if you can remember back that far, Joe, I know you have a, a very difficult time with some of your long term memory uh, because of all those concerts you attend. <laughs> but the he came in as a freshman. Luke Janiszewski was the leading rusher on that team, and he suffered a devastating injury late in the year. And Western Wayne was playing a quarterfinal playoff game at Mid Valley. And I can remember head coach Randy Wolf at the time telling me, boy, you know, we're going to be turning it over to a freshman at the running back position and we'll see what happens. And, you know, Josh Vinton, he, he may have weighed a 140 pound soak and wet that year, <laughs> but boy, did he run hard, Joe. Yeah. And I, I think he had, you know, 185 or 190 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns or, or at least one touchdown. And uh, Western Wayne almost pulled off a major upset in that playoff game against Mid Valley. And I knew at that moment, when you see a young player, a, a freshman, who's really not physically ready to compete against juniors and seniors, they're just, you know, he clearly was ready to do that, but, yes. you know, he, he didn't look the part at that time. Well, after three years now, he certainly looks the part. He's very, very muscular. He put a lot of time in in the weight room. He's about 185 pounds, and he's a solid football player. He's got great speed. And the one thing that really sets him apart from a lot of the backs in the league is he hits the hole when he sees it. When he sees a crease or an opening, he hits it at 100 miles an hour. Now, of course, it's an exaggeration, but he really is intense going through the line of scrimmage, and, and he really does run with a lot of uh, passion and a lot of desire. And, you know, it shows up in his results. You know, we're not, I'm not a huge stat guy. Uh, I mean, clearly you have to reward those guys who, who do the big things and turn out the big numbers. But I just like the way Josh Vinton plays football. And, and clearly Western Wayne has, has benefited from having him in the backfield 5-0 and after five weeks. Absolutely. Joe, but you know I'm the stat guy, right? I do, Joe. <laughs> you and I have gotten into a couple of heated discussions over the meaning 
fullness of stats and <laughs> your obsession with fantasy football, but that's right. So, but yeah, no, in, in all seriousness, everything you said, I, I haven't seen Josh Vinton as much as you, but when I did see him play, that's exactly, that's exactly it. He's always, he's hitting the hole when he, when he takes a hit, he's not going down after the first hit. He's, he's going to get you yards, whether it's, you know, whether it's only two or three, if, if, you know, if the hole collapses, I mean, he he's still going to get you positive yards and positive plays. And, you know, it, it, it ends up showing up in the stats and he's, he's just a great player for a great team this season. And, uh, Joby, I, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a little bit more in the paper about Josh Vinton. Joe, that's an excellent tease, but yes, we are going to see a little bit more. <laughs> About a little bit more in depth about Josh Vinton in the paper moving forward here this week. But also, Joe, I believe that's two straight athletes from Western Lane sure. as our Times Tribune athletes of the week. And that's quite an accomplishment for you know Josh Vinton and Reagan Palmer exactly. back to back moves. Exactly. That's uh it goes to goes to show at, at least uh, at least Reagan doesn't have as many as many bragging rights as Josh. Joe, I think Josh Vinton took to heart me saying that Reagan Palmer got to brag. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. And, and he took it out on poor old Forge. So. <laughs> Our bad. Our bad on yeah. that one. But <laughs> I think you're right. Um, so there were a few other uh, really good performances. Uh, one that stuck out, Joby, and, and we've talked about Tommy Clark on past episodes, but he, last week he had three game winning goal. Mm, in, yeah. In a week. I mean, that. that's ex- exactly, you know, on, on top of it, he gets his 50th career assist. I mean, just, just a great week from, from Tommy Clark and it, it just, it, it goes to show it's, again, that's, that's something else that goes beyond stats. That's like a, that's like that clutch gene they talk about. Yeah. Joe, I was just going to give him the nickname Captain Clutch. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> didn't he just also celebrate his hundredth career goal yes. and he's got 50 yeah. assists in his career? I mean, that's a total consummate team player. And that, that doesn't surprise me at all about Tommy Clark. If you remember back when he was younger, Joe, he, and he may still be doing it. I'm not following it that closely yet, but he used to run cross country and play soccer in the same year. And in track and field, he is, he's always running relays to help Dunmore win the dual meet season at the Jordan relays and everything. So, you know, what a great, what a terrific athlete he is all around. Right. And Joe, let's not forget, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, he's going to Lafayette College. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I, f- I forgot Joe, why you were so eager to talk about him. Uh, Tommy Clark night. is going to, every time we reference Tommy Clark, he's going to get sick of me saying he's going to Lafayette College. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Man. Joe, you there's crack, a small, me up. there's a small rumor out there that I attended that <laughs> academic institution. So. Oh, is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. I just wanted to let that, let some of the people know. <laughs> That's interesting. That's interesting. So, by the way, allow me mm-hmm. saying that Tommy Clark is is going to Lafayette College. I am a proud uncle who two of my nieces, Molly and Riley Fawcett, are both graduates of Lafayette College already. And I have a third niece, Zoe Fawcett, who is in her freshman year at Lafayette College. Wow. All three much smarter than me. <laughs> oh, come on, Joby. Don't don't be so hard on yourself. Very proud. Probably true though. But. <laughs> yes. That's one hundred percent true. <laughs> Joby. So we have just a couple there's a lot to hit on, Joby, that you know, I mean that that tells you we've got some great athletes here. Brian Barbosa. Well, that's the whole reason you started the Film Room Podcast. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Someone needed to talk about it. That's right. I mean, we're doing it. Brian Barbosa, West Granton Boys Soccer, scored his 50th career goal. That's, you know, not just not just his success, but 
Wes Granton having quite a season in soccer, one of their best in a little while. So he had a nice week in the Lackawanna League District Qualifiers. Brendan Bell uh, and TJ Staff from Scranton Prep, they both shot two under 70 at Elkview Country Club to lead Scranton Prep. Cade Kelleher and Robert Munley from Abington Heights each had a two over 74 to lead the Comets. They also had some some pretty good some pretty good scores later in the week too. Kate Kelleher shot a one under 35 at Glen O. TJ Stott shot a 37 at Lords Valley Country Club, earning medalist honors. So a lot of great performances to go around from the week. Joby, any you anything you want to touch on, or we got to move well, to high school football. We will get into high school football, Joe, but really quickly about the golf. Yeah. Again, I'm. The only golf thing I do now is mini golf, and I'm horrible at it. But the the golfers are getting into the postseason now. You know, we've got some playoffs going on right now. And, of course, those were the District 2 qualifying events that took place. So we know who's going in from the Lackawanna League to the District 2 championships. And this season is going to come to a very rapid conclusion here, but you're going to see some pretty impressive scores from the kids from Abington Heights and Scranton Prep. I don't know if, you know, I don't want to get too much in depth with the, the qualifying list, but I think Scranton Prep had the top six qualifying scores in two A boys. I believe that's, I believe that's correct. Actually. And Abington Heights is somewhere in the neighborhood of six or seven of the top scores. So yeah, th- those two teams are pretty deep and they're going to, you know, they're going to do some real damage here as we move into the postseason. Absolutely. Joby, do you prefer the Falls or the Streams course at Leahy Family Glen Park? Uh, the Falls, Joe. <laughs> it is the better one. You're right. Yes. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, so They're all challenging for me. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. High school football. If we have to, Joe. If, yeah, we're going to go to it. We're going to go to it. Hey, 28 minutes in. We, well, actually, we discussed Josh Vinton, so I guess that's Yeah, but that's okay, Joe. Listen, the high school football season is the midway point. Yep. You and I both know. Yep. This is actually, what did I tell you earlier this week, that this is actually what week nine for me or week eight? Right. Yes. Because I have the two weeks in the preseason, the one week before the preseason starts to get ready. So we're already, while the teams are getting into week six, I'm into week nine already. That's right. Mm-hmm. Exactly, Joby. And Joby, you you said you were going to flip a coin to which game I was going to cover and you were going to cover. And whatever it landed on, I ended up at Lackawanna Trail and you ended up at Scranton. Yeah, Joe, uh, listen, you know, if you were a nice enough guy, you would probably offer me, you know, at least a slice of pizza or something if he does a bad deal. Yeah, so I flipped the coin and, and it, you know, full disclosure here, Joe, and, and, and we can, you know, get into this a little bit. But so I texted you on Friday just to double check, you know, just because. Because <laughs> I live five minutes away from Scranton. <laughs> you live five minutes away from Scranton Veterans Memorial Stadium, and I live a little bit closer to Lackawanna Trail than I do to Scranton. So I just wanted to double check with you yep. if you were okay with going to Lackawanna Trail and I was going to go to the Scranton Prep Scranton game and you were adamant it was going to be okay. You were going to make it work. And That's right. You had had a long day already at that point, but you were, you know, and sure enough, as always seems to be the case when I come to come to me selecting the game of the week, I whiffed. Scranton Prep defeated Scranton 43 to nothing. And of course, the Lackawanna Trail Mid Valley game was extremely close. Yeah, it ends up being one of the best games of the week, Jovi. And I was, I was happy to be there. So, you know, go, going in and I, by no means taking anything away from Mid Valley when I, when I talk about Lackawanna Trail here, you know, you, Lackawanna Trail, smaller school, you know, you see, like, you do the eye test and you see Mid Valley run in, you see Lackawanna Trail run in, and it's just like, all right, I think, I think Mid Valley's going to win this, you know, based on that. And then 
you, you, you know, you start playing and you just see just number one, Steve Jervis is, is a great coach and he's got a great staff and he has, you know, he has his team just clicking and they're, they execute so well. I mean, this isn't anything new. He's been great for years. I used to cover Lackawanna Trail for the Abington Journal back in the day, right when he was first starting a trail. And he's, he's just an incredible coach and it, it shows on the field and his players really buy in to the system. You know, it's, and it's, it's, it's not just the execution, but when they need a big play, they just, they get it. They get it every time. Isaac Ryan, 107 yards, two touchdowns on 17 carries. Demetrius Douglas, 100 yards and two touchdowns on 15 carries. But again, the stats were not the full story. Demetrius Douglas, Demetrius Douglas and Isaac Ryan, by the way, both wrestlers, just throwing that in there. Uh-huh. Um, third and 13, tie ball game. Trail ends up handing the ball off to Douglas, who who's able to sprint up the middle, break some tackles, bounce outside for about a 30-yard gain later in the drive. For fourth and four, Mid-Valley hits him short of the line of gain. And then all of a sudden he spins, he reaches, gets the first down. It ends in a drive ends in a touchdown. Trail takes the lead, ultimately gets the victory. It, it's just, it, it was, it was incredible to see, you know, kudos to obviously Steve Jervis and that staff, kudos to the kids and their execution and buying into the program, this program that's been excellent for years. Also, you know, Logan Edwards doing a few of the little things. One of them, he scooped a squib kick in to start the second half, returns at 23 yards to the Mid Valley 49, sets up the opening, opening touchdown of the third quarter. Just, just great, well executed game from trail in, in victory over a very good and at the time unbeaten Mid Valley team. Yeah, Joe, for those who have Again, not the the history background of Lackawanna Trail football. I was once an assistant coach at Lackawanna Trail back in the late 90s. Some of these names will be quite familiar to you, Joe Barres. Yogi Roth. Of course. John Glenn. Yep. Just to name a few. Richard Jackson, Morris Jackson. So I coached those guys when, when they kind of turned this generation of Lackawanna Trail football this era from the late 90s, early 2000s, to where we are now, into what it is. I mean, it's it really, but Coach Jeff Wasotek was there to start that thing, that run, and Steve Jervis has really just kind of taken the ball and run with it with his uh, wing tee offense and, and his real commitment to the the kids. Yes. He doesn't have a lot, Joe. You're right. You're going to, you see a, a Mid Valley take the football field with 45 or 50 players on its roster. And here comes Lackawanna Trail with the injured guys. I think they have what, 20 active players yeah. out there in uniform. And, you know, wow, every year Lackawanna Trail is right there, you know, coming off of last year where the Lions won their first 13 games of the season before losing the Steelton Ice Buyer. Yep. In the state playoffs, Stilton High Spire, of course, went on to win the state championship in Class 1A. And this year, again, very difficult schedule. Let's 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 reel off the names, Joe, of of some of the teams that Lackawanna Trails played already: Tunkanic, Class 3A; Western Wayne, Class 3A; Berwick, Class 3A; Mid Valley. Class 3A. Okay, this is a Class 1A football team right. playing the big schools of District 2. Yep. Okay, and still having success. So, and, you know, so congratulations to Lackawanna Trail. They've got a big one coming up this week, though, Joe, on the road at Old Forge. And here's why I bring this up. This is a rivalry like very few in the small school division because there's so much success and so much tradition at both of these schools they really, really go at each other for that class 1A playoff spots, those class 1A championships. And what has been interesting about this rivalry is 
Old Forge, in recent years anyway, has had great success against Lackawanna Trail in the regular season. That has generally led to Lackawanna Trail being motivated for the rematch later in the year and reversing the fortune of that game. So this will be interesting this week to see how this plays out because, of course, Lackawanna Trail is coming off what was a very emotional and physical football game against Mid-Valley. And Old Ford had a tough game as well against Western Wayne on the road. So it'll be really, really intriguing matchup between these two teams that are fighting for the right to play in that District 111 Class 1A sub-regional play, District 2 11 Class 1A sub-regional playoffs. It's a great rivalry, Joby. It's it's great. It, it's great to witness. And just to touch on Mid Valley quickly here, it's funny because I don't like when I don't like when people say, although I've I've said it, you know, Jacob Lesher had 155 yards, a touchdown on 17 carries. One the the great thing about Trails defense is that if you take out one touch one 79 yard run for a touchdown. They held him to seven, 76 yards on 16 carries. So that's great effort. But you know what, Joby? You can't take out that 79-yard touchdown. Joe, sure, I've told you that a million times. <laughs> How many times, right? Isn't really? that part of the game? <laughs> part of the game. <laughs> I've, I've always said that when we when we have these evaluations of, of games, more so when you and I are talking maybe about the NFL or the college game, not as much the high school, but listen. You know, well, geez, if they just didn't throw those two interceptions, well, right. yeah, right. Well, that's part of the game. Guys. <laughs> this, the, the funny thing about it, Joe, is this: this is not a game of Madden. This is not no. college football 2024 on your Xbox. This is real football. Yes, turnovers are part of the game. That's right. If one of the things you coach in high school football is you have to take care of the football. You have to move the chains. You have to execute. And in high school, many of those same kids who you are coaching to do those things on the offensive side of the ball to protect the ball and help you win games, later on in your practice, you're telling those same kids, we need to turn the ball, we need to get the turnovers, we need to get, you know, we need to make tackles behind the line of scrimmage. So that's the neat thing I've always thought about high school football is you're coaching like in, in NFL football, professional football, and college football for the most defensive guys are practicing defense. In high school, you're playing both ways. And right. so that's the unique thing about football is you, you it's not a video game. You have to do those things. You have to take care of the ball. You gotta get first downs. You've got to convert, just like Demetrius Douglas had to convert in the clutch on a fourth down play. You know, those are all part of the game. And, yeah, turnovers are part of the game, and the team that does get the turnover generally wins the football game. So I'm glad you brought that up, Joe. But, yes, in the bigger picture, it was a pretty good job by Lackawanna Trail's defense after Jacob Lesher showed off what he's been able to do the entire year with the burst of speed and a a 70-plus yard touchdown run. They were able to contain him for the most part, and that really is what, Joe, you can say that, keeping him out of the end zone after that. Right help them win the football game. Right, exactly. And, you know, this is – Mid-Valley will take this as a learning experience. I mean, they they had – penalties just killed them. I think they had seven for 75 yards. And it just seemed every time they got this big run, it was called back for a hold. So they'll take that as a learning experience. They're a good football team, as we've talked about, and they'll be back and better next week, I'm sure. So, Joe, in the – Flip side of that coin, I got the Scranton Scranton prep game. Yeah. Okay. And Scranton prep, we know is clearly a very talented football team. Okay. And it, it really flexed on the offensive and defensive lines against Scranton, which kept coming into the game had a very good defense is certainly in the last couple of weeks in helping get off to that four and oh start. Okay. Scranton Prep didn't do a lot of things fancy. The one thing I will say about Scranton Prep that's that's interesting watching them as they're developing and evolving and building as the season goes on is a lot of formations, not a lot of motion, but a lot of formations. You're getting a lot of, you know, modest shifting. 
to get your defense kind of thinking about different things. And then they're just running the football right at you. And Lewis Parrish is a very physical runner at the quarterback position. Will McPartland, who had that terrific resume in junior football, and we knew what he was going to be because of what a great lacrosse player he is in the spring. He's running the football with a lot of strength and power. And, you know, and Lewis can hurt you with his arm throwing the football. He, you know, has, has been completing some passes. He hit Brady Holmes again for another touchdown against Scranton. But really, on top of all that, Joe, the defense was just very impressive against Scranton, very physical up front. You know, of course, they pointed out Ambrose Ross. He was our hidden hero this week because he had an excellent game on both sides of the football. But look, the entire defense played great. Reese Tanner was outstanding on the defensive side. And, you know, they did Scranton prep really looked impressive in this game against Scranton. Now, Scranton comes away from that game with a lot of guys banged up. And that tends to happen around this time of the year, Joe, when you're, you know, you're, the bumps and bruises become a little bit more challenging to overcome physically because, you again, you've already put in the two weeks of preseason in, and now you've put five football games, and the bodies are starting to wear down. And so Scranton's got to recover quickly here because it's really getting into the teeth of its schedule. It's got Valley View this week in a very key Black one football conference division one game. If you're Scranton, you don't want to fall number one too far out of the race. And you certainly want to get these guys healthy again so that later on down the season, when you get into the playoffs, because Scranton will be playing in the playoffs in class six A, that you're at a hundred percent. You're not gonna always be a hundred percent, but you're gonna be as a hundred percent as you can be at that time of the year. Yeah, absolutely, Joby. And I'll be at that Valley View Scranton game, so I'll be interested to see I'll be seeing Valley View for the first time. Joe, I took that into consideration when I assigned that game, by the way. I appreciate that. (laughs) I appreciate that. So, yeah, I really want to see Valley View just because of how they've, uh, again, they they pick up another win, 36-20 over Holmesdale. Nick Kaharski, 77 yards and a touchdown on eight carries, one catch for 48 yards and a completion. He also threw a 32-yard touchdown. Zach. Kolinsky, 60 yards, three touchdowns, six carries, had 63 yards passing. Another strong win for Valley View. Mm-hmm. Abington Heights, Gavin Anders, really, really big game for him, blocked a punt that ended up going for a touchdown. Uh, he also had six catches for 50 yards and a touchdown in Abington Heights, 21-3 win over North Pocono. So Abington Heights has a pretty... Pretty big matchup as well this week, Joey. Yeah, Joe, I'm looking forward to this Delaware Valley at Abington Heights game. You know how fond I am of those 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon games interrupting my college football viewing. (laughs) But no, but at least this is going to be a marquee matchup. And the reason I'm really looking forward to it is I want to see just what Delaware Valley is going to bring to the table. Clearly bouncing back from the 0-4 start to the season with a a win over a very talented and improved wall and pop back team last week. And uh, Abington Heights, you know, this is a team I've seen Abington play against a Valley View, and it was a good performance, came up a little bit short and kind of an old school type of football game. So I'm interested to see these two teams played in the District 2 Class 5A final last year, Joe. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see because, again, Delaware Valley with one win, <laughs> Joe. Yeah. Moved into second place in the District 2 power rating standings behind Abington Heights. Yeah. So clearly Delaware Valley strength of schedule is going to give it the upper hand as we move forward and qualifying for the postseason. But, you know, I want to see how these two teams match up. It's, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see. I think both of them have kind of put the idea of winning or sharing a Division One championship into the rearview mirror a little bit just because, you know, at least Abington Heights does have a matchup with Scranton Prep later on. Delaware Valley has already lost to Scranton Prep. So it, it, I just think it's going to be a real good matchup for a team like Delaware Valley looking to continue its improvement and its recovery. And Team Abington Heights really wants to establish itself as the favorite in District 2 Class 5A. Yeah, absolutely, Joby. And just to touch quickly on... Susquehanna had a seven, sorry, 16 to six win over Lakeland. Weston Yanoni, 172 yards and two touchdowns on 21 carries. 
it's, it's just another solid victory for the Susquehanna program, Joby. Yeah, and you know, a great credit to the coaching staff up there. Most Perry is the head coach. Philip Yanoni, uh, Weston's dad, is the offensive coordinator up there. Nate Williams is the defensive coach. Look, Susquehanna lost to Western Wayne big in opening week, okay? Since then, all Susquehanna has done is won four straight games, and two of those wins have come over the last two teams, or programs, I should say, to win the District 2 Class 2A championship, that being Lakeland in 2022 and Dunmore last season. So you see where the, how the Susquehanna program has kind of built itself now into contender. And we're going to find out just how talented and, and solid a football team Susquehanna is this week because the Sabres are going to be on the road. There's always an advantage when Susquehanna plays at home because it plays on Saturday afternoon. Right. On the road at Riverside. And that high scoring offense that coach Harry Armstrong has really unleashed on all of his opponents here in the first five weeks. I think they're averaging somewhere in the neighborhood of 42 points a game. And clearly after that opening week game against Dunmore have really righted the ship. Chase Tadonio, quarterback, he is now one of the top quarterbacks in terms of career yardage. He's up over 4,000 and career touchdown passes. Richie Kostoff is now among the best all-time leading receivers among tight ends in Lackawanna Football Conference history. And look, Riverside is 5-0 and for the first time since 2010 and have been very impressive in building that record. So that's going to be a great game this weekend as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Chase Tadonio, as you mentioned, 12-19 for 262 yards, six touchdowns. Yeah, that's not a bad effort. Not bad. They won 55 to zero. Speaking of high powered offense, 55 to zero over Montrose. Braden Rose, five catches, 144 yards, three touchdowns. Jared Jackson, three catches for 55, 55 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, that's going to be an exciting one. And, and Joby, you have a high school notebook, high school football notebook that talks a little bit more about Chase Tedonio and some other guys going for some milestones that's going to be in well by the time people listen to this it'll be today thursday's paper so check that out and also joe i encourage people to read i do encourage people to read that notebook because i've been trying to do on a weekly basis is keep people updated on where these athletes are in terms of their career numbers guys like chase ted donio uh, richie kostoff we've already touched on josh vinton Uh, i'm going to be adding sean owens to the list here pretty soon and uh, Jacob Lesher from Mid Valley. These guys are players who've been around for a long time, have really put some impressive numbers up. And it's always nice too, Joe, for us to kind of interject a little bit of history into some of the current news and notes that are going on in the Lackawanna Football Conference. Because again, Joe, I used to play football. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> You're pretty we, good we, at it, Joe. We, we had a great conversation when I visited Western Wayne this week. I, when I was doing the tour around the camp, I had been kind of hanging out with this injured player from one of the teams I had been visiting. And he had asked me, you know, did you ever play football? And I said, yeah, I played a long time ago. Back, I graduated my last season was 1987. So, Joe, you're much better at math than I am because you went to Holy Cross and I did not. And so I thought to myself, wow, 1987. Hmm. That is a very long time ago. Okay. <laughs> take that amount of years away from 1987 and go the other direction. Let's just take 30 years off of it. It would be like me in 1987 talking to a player who had played in 1950. That's true. <laughs> 37 years, Jovi. 37 okay, Joe, years. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So, yeah, I, I did play many, many, many years ago. But, yeah, that was a – that's why I like to throw a little history in every town now and then. Absolutely, Joby. Yeah, Joby, I think that wraps up our week five talk. Anything – I mean, I, I think we touched on week six as well. Anything that we may have left out? The only thing we left out of today's podcast, Joe, was the terrible luck I've had with my lawnmower. No, no. <laughs> Joby, that's not good. So, Joe, during all of our work sessions that we have, you know, clearly we work a lot of hours, but I like to try to squeeze in a 
an hour or two to cut my grass, okay? Right. Well, I didn't mention this to you earlier in the week, but my tractor, which has kind of been band-aided together quite a few times already, it finally went kaput. The entire I was in mid mid cut. Oh, no. And the entire deck just collapsed. It just fell off the tractor. Uh, no, apparently no. Apparently you're supposed to kind of do some long term maintenance on your lawnmowers, uh, keeping the, the debris and stuff off of the deck. Otherwise it's going to rust and, and, and break away, which it did. Uh, fortunately I have a great neighbor across the street, John Siemens, who came over. He finished my yard and anybody who's ever seen my yard, I have a million golf balls in the backyard and I, it, it's certainly a minefield back there. So we, so I have not been able to cut the grass, Joe, yeah. because I don't have a track. Yeah, it gets dirt. And, Joe, my grass in this kind of weather grows outrageously. But I did purchase a new lawnmower. Anybody who would like to donate funds to the Joby Recovery Fund, <laughs> welcome to do so. Uh, but we did buy a new lawnmower. I got out there the other day, cut the grass. So we're a little bit – we're getting ourselves back on track. Much like Delaware Valley's football season's on the road to recovery, my yard is on the road to recovery. It's going to take, it's going to take another – two cuts to kind of get back to where I want it to be Yeah, because I had to back off a little bit because of the rain, but right. we're going to get there, Joe, but nobody had, if I didn't have bad luck with my lawnmower, I'd have no luck at all. <laughs> Joby, you got to get those last cuts in before, before the winter as well. <laughs> this is, this is key. This is a big problem for you. Joe, I am the only person whose lawnmower would crap out with about two or three cuts left in the season. So I have to run out and buy a new lawnmower with about two weeks left in the season. Now that's that my look. That's it. Uh, and, and the the link to the GoFundMe is Joe. Well, we have, we have a distributor. Uh, yeah, but anybody anybody who's sympathetic with my plight and understanding the financial burden of having to purchase a new lawnmower understands that I am really squeezing the wallet this week. Exactly. <laughs> Fair, fair enough. If you see Joby on the sidelines, just throw him a five dollar bill or something. Well, that's a Joe. That'd be called solicitation. I don't want to say that. That's true. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm not trying to break any laws. Here, Joe. <laughs> Joby, Michigan won. Beat USC. Yeah, Joe. Joe, I did enjoy watching again. Going to see Valley View play, which you're going to see this week. That's going to throw you right back to the Michigan game because you're going to see about three or four passes, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but Michigan, we I was able to catch the tail end of that game, and of course USC and Lincoln Riley is going to lay down in the last two minutes. <laughs> when was the last time Lincoln Riley won a big game? Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> the last time I think would be the first time. <laughs> That's what I would say, Joby. Incredible. If <laughs> this this is a huge weekend of college football, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but just want to point out, of course. We are Penn State having a whiteout, I believe, or a pseudo whiteout. You know, yeah, yeah, not not the official whiteout. Not the official whiteout. This is going to be a, a halfway light whiteout or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so Penn State's going to host Illinois. Illinois coming off the big win over Nebraska. I just want to give quick recognition here. My dear friend, James Depote, who's a big Mid-Valley guy. He works at Mid-Valley High School, Lakeland graduate. His band, Poor Decisions is playing at 1230 at Penn State. So if you're at the game, the make sure you check, make sure you check out poor decisions. Okay. They have a lot of activities going on this weekend at Penn State and Joe, the other night game, Georgia at Alabama. Of course, Lakeland's night, former Lakeland tight end CJ Dupree going to be involved in a huge SEC matchup. This is going to have playoff implications. Joe, I can't believe we're saying that in the NCAA. Exactly. I still think both of these teams are going to get in, sure. but man, that's a heck of a game in, in this midseason part of the, you know, we're just getting toward October and the, the two best teams in the SEC are going head to head. Right. That, that is awesome. Joby, it's, it'll be, it'll be an exciting weekend. Also, Joby, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of jealous. A poor decision sounds like a band that I would really enjoy. You would, Joe. They're very, very talented. Exactly. Very good. Yeah. Exactly. So. Well, you've made a lot of those, Joe, too, by the way. That's what I mean. It's exactly what I'm saying. I've made them and I would probably enjoy 
listen, if I like a band called Corn with that starts with a K and a backward R, I'm sure I would enjoy poor decisions with that. The best thing about that, Joe, is you thought it was spelled correctly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joby. You're absolutely right. You're yeah. absolutely right. So, Joby, I, unless you have anything else, I think that wraps it up for episode six of the film room podcast. And well, Joe, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for keeping me up all night. I appreciate that. And uh, seriously, enjoy your football game on Friday. I probably won't talk to you again until tomorrow morning. So probably, probably not, Joby. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be so long. And yeah, hey, thanks so much for staying up with me again. We have Game Face coming out on Friday. It's going to be a good one too, by the way, Joe. Going to be a good one. You can also get all our other content online as well, thetimes-tribune.com slash sports. So... 